previous tutorial, we explored the process of ultrafiltration in the glomerulus. This tutorial introduces you to the next steps in the production of urine, namely tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion. If you like what you see on our channel, please like, share, subscribe and turn on notifications. Now what is tubular reabsorption? Tubular reabsorption is the process that moves solutes and water out of the glomerular filtrate and back into the bloodstream. This is an important step because the filtrate contains many useful substances that need to be sent back to the blood so that those substances can be used by the body. This process is known as reabsorption because this is the second time they have been absorbed. The first time being when they were absorbed into the bloodstream from the digestive tract after a meal. How does reabsorption in the nephron work? We have learned in our previous tutorial the process of ultrafiltration in which the glomerulus filters water and small solutes out of the bloodstream. The resulting filtrate contains not only waste but also other substances the body needs like essential mineral ions, glucose, amino acids, vitamins and smaller proteins. When the filtrate exits the glomerulus, it flows down into the renal tubule. As the filtrate moves, useful substances are reabsorbed and pass back into the blood in the capillaries that surround the renal tubule. Reabsorption takes place by passive diffusion and active transport. It occurs only to the extent that the normal concentration of the blood is undisturbed. Different parts of the tubule bring about reabsorption of different substances and thus it is selective reabsorption. So what are the substances reabsorbed by the different parts of the tubule? The majority of the reabsorption takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule which is 70 to 80 percent of electrolytes, amino acids, glucose and water. The descending limb of the loop of Henle helps in reabsorption of only water while the ascending limb helps in the reabsorption of only ions like sodium and chloride ions. The distal convoluted tubule helps in the reabsorption of more water and ions. It also reabsorbs bicarbonate ions. Large amounts of water is reabsorbed by the collecting ducts. By this time, the filtrate becomes very concentrated. Now the last step in the process of urine formation is called tubular secretion which is the exact opposite of reabsorption. In selective reabsorption, useful substances are absorbed from the nephron into the blood vessels. Whereas in tubular secretion, harmful substances are released from the blood vessels into the nephron. Tubular secretion involves the removal of metabolic waste substances from the blood capillaries and tissue and their active secretion by the tubular cells into the filtrate in the nephron. It occurs throughout the different parts of the nephron from the proximal convoluted tubule to the collecting duct at the end of the nephron. The substances that are secreted into the tubular fluid for removal from the body include potassium ions, hydrogen ions, ammonium ions, creatinine, urea, uric acid, some hormones and large number of foreign chemicals including drugs like penicillin are passed into the remaining filtrate which finally becomes urine. The movement of urea and ammonia is through diffusion whereas all other tubular secretion involves active transport. The urine flows out of the nephron tubule 
into the collecting duct. Urine that is formed via the three processes of ultrafiltration, reabsorption and secretion leaves the kidney through the renal pelvis into the ureter down to the urinary bladder and is finally expelled out of the body through the urethra. The urine produced is 95% water and 5% wastes such as urea, creatinine and variable concentrations of ions. Stay tuned as we journey into the world of science with Science Excel.